ladies and gentlemen, welcome to This Is A Rewind, a look back at what wrestling used to be and possibly should still be. Now with me as always, my brand new tag team partner, Shelby Death Ray Patterson. What is going on? Hey, dogs. <laughs> How are you doing, bud? Oh, man, I'm a ball of nerves, I'm man. S- I'm-, I'm so excited. I know we were talking about before how we were nervous, but I mean, it, when there's anything new, mm-hmm. right, we're going to be nervous and right. it's fine, but we've had this idea for a while now. Yeah. And we, we haven't put it into work and you know, it's, there's never a good time to do anything new. Never. So, and also I should apologize for the acoustics. We are operating at about 50% capacity <laughs> at uh kayfabe outpost one. <laughs> we've had some construction issues and we're working on that. I mean, so. every fourth fortress is a work in progress, that's, right? That's right. You that's know, right. you gotta, you gotta build it up to make it your fortress of solitude. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is our brand new podcast from long walk podcast. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to look back at wrestling right? and we're going to be talking about some specific matches. I guess when we talked uh, before we thought seeing as we have WrestleMania coming up, I mm-hmm. guess As we're recording this, it is the Friday before WrestleMania weekend. So, WrestleMania Eve, if you will. There you go. The the Ides of WrestleMania. (laughs) The Ides of WrestleMania. That's probably more of a better Probably, given the circumstances. Yeah. So, we're... uh, (laughs) the, The Ides of WrestleMania are upon us. And we thought, since we're having our title unification match, and that's supposed to be the big draw for WrestleMania... That's what we ought to talk about this time. Yeah, and, you know, we've been on each other. Well, you've never actually been on This Is A Takeover, You will right? not invite me, no. You know, we always love to be invited to yours, but when you come into our house, you know, we get a little nervous. I know, I know. I mean, but but we I have been a guest, and Gina as well, but I've been a guest on your show for a couple of shows now, and we just kind of noticed the back and forth that we have, and we just kind of felt like we needed to have our own space to talk. I, I understand. I understand. Plus, I'm a hard person to work with on the <laughs> podcast. So You know, and, and apparently I'm the only one who was willing to do, you know, a solo show with you. And so I, I appreciate it. Uh, Barnes <laughs> has been working with me for four years now, and he's just still lukewarm to the idea. So. You know, I mean, I'm I'm here to help, and I'm, I'm excited because I feel like we have... We come from two different eras of wrestling. And that's what I think is going to make this good. Go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, you worked in the business and Mm -hmm. you came up in a very different time than myself. Right. And I've been influenced by different things than you've been influenced by. Oh, without question. Absolutely. And I feel like... Our opinions are very similar, but very different at the same time. So I feel like that would, it's a really good dynamic for a show. Yeah. Now, before we get started, uh, I thought this might be fun. And I believe I've probably asked you this before, but seeing oh as this dear, is a I probably new won't podcast, remember dogs. <laughs> that's okay. It's okay. You can make it up. Okay. But, fair enough. <laughs> um, what first attracted you to? to pro wrestling oh okay yeah I do know you you have asked me this before um I really started watching wrestling with my dad when I was younger Mm -hmm. in the like the end of the attitude era I don't know the the specific dates of like the historians would know of like when the attitude era started and ended. So we would probably say 2002, mm-hmm. somewhere in there. Is when it ended? Um, 2001. Pro- well, yeah, it, it would have been because that's when they got, uh, WCW got bought out. Okay. Which kind of ended the attitude era. Okay. Gotcha. So I, I just know stone cold Steve Austin mm-hmm. was such a presence in my wrestling vernacular and vocabulary he's pretty much the only one that I remember right really from like the early days and he was my dad's favorite and when he stopped watching I stopped watching obviously but he still kind of resonated with me Mm because I mean just like with everything with wrestling and pop culture like it kind of is always there yeah right so you kind of see glimpses of wrestling in pop culture even if you're not 
really into it. So like people who are not really into wrestling mm-hmm. probably know who Stone Cold is. Oh, right? without question. It's like if you can go to the farthest reaches of the world and say the name Hulk Hogan <laughs> and they're going to know at, at least half of that population is going to know who you're talking about. Exactly. And that's kind of how Stone Cold was with me. And I, re- I remember very distinctly, I don't remember how old I was. It was probably like early 2000s so probably 99 2000 so I was like eight or nine maybe so Mm -hmm. I I just remember having this vision of Stone Cold and he was in the black trunks with the black boots with the bald head and he didn't have a lot uh, this is gonna sound weird but he didn't have a lot going on Right. right, and what as I mean far by as gimmick and right, flash, he just came out and he was just like, "I hate this guy, and this is why, and now I'm gonna beat him up." And it was right. just like very simple, like I don't know. It was just very, very um, easy for a young kid to understand. And then when you have your dad, who's like super, you know, like mm-hmm. super chill with him, and like he's the working man, and like he can relate to like the middle class America. Right. And it's, he just, he was cool. Yeah. He was just really cool. And he just beat people up and it was a good thing that he did that. Right. 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 So then I, I went away from it for a while and then I came back like years later when I got to college Mm -hmm. and when the shield was a thing Oh yeah. and the shield reminded me of Steve Austin. Right. Like they had that like simple, like we're in the tactical gear. It's all black. There's nothing flashy about us. We just beat the shit out of people. Right. Right. And it just really resonated with me and kind of got me back into it. Right. So I think like, and I joke about this on, this is a takeover all the time. Like I just love the brutality Mm -hmm. of wrestling. And I think that maybe is what drawed me in as a kid. Right. Was just the simple brutality of it. So what is your first memory My, of wrestling? Oh, um, that's a tough one. It I, I know. is. It is. Cause I, again, I was probably like eight when I first started watching. Yeah. Um, I want to say it just has to be stone cold's iconic look. Like yeah. I don't remember a specific, like match that he had with anyone mm-hmm. or anything like that. It was just like a wrestler's presence, right. which was just the like badass. I'm going to come in on a beer truck and oh, yeah. just, you know, Iconic kill the game. Moment. Right. Like I, I faintly remember that. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to say like, I know exactly where I was when that episode happened, Sure. but I, I just remember the presence mm-hmm. that I felt when he was on screen and like basically everybody else who was on screen. Yeah. Right. So I, I guess it, I don't know if that answers your question or it not. It does. It does. <laughs> now I tell you, my first memory when I actually came online to wrestling and probably just online in general mm-hmm. was, uh, I, I couldn't tell you the year, but it was Georgia championship wrestling. We were at my uncle's house in mm-hmm. South Carolina and back then, my uncle had a satellite dish, so he mm. could get Georgia Championship Wrestling. Oh, so it was on TV. It, yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. And the first person that I saw was Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Oh, I know that name. <laughs> and I don't remember the match. All I know is that apparently he beat somebody really, really tough, and his face was a crimson mask. Oh. And I remember watching him and getting scared because I was like, he's going to (laughs) die. And he won this match and he just kept running around the ring screaming, ho. And then he ran out into the crowd, blood just covering his whole body now. He's got the the, the American flag and the two by four days, ho. And he's just, he's up in the bleachers now. And I'm like, is somebody not going to get him? This like, madman who's bleeding it's, from his head. <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> and I was hooked ever since. I was like, I have got to watch this next week. How old were you? I couldn't tell you. Oh, man. Yeah. Maybe 
five, oh, four, wow. something like that. So it could could have been like one of your first memories. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, easily, wow. easily. Yeah. And, and yeah, the, so that was my first memory, and it's kind of funny uh, the the way we uh, uh, call our first memories out here mm-hmm. is it because mine is a bloody hacksaw Jim Duggan <laughs> who is. Uh, who has always been, by all intents and purposes, a mid Carter. Yeah. Uh, who never really won a title, who never you never really considered him a champion. Yeah. Uh yours on the other <laughs> hand is the guy. Yeah. An A lister mm-hmm. and the iconic beer truck coming down to the ring moment. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of gives you an idea of where our thought process is. Oh, absolutely. And I think it shows how iconic wrestling as a whole is, right? Because it can it can have the big, you know, mega stars like Stone Cold and The Rock, and that's going to be someone's first impression. Mm -hmm. Or it can be a Fed in Georgia, where you know Hacksaw, who may not be known yet, Mm -hmm. is just having a bloody mess and running through the crowd, right? right? So I think it just shows the diversity that wrestling can really reach you know everyone because we are very two different people yeah right and, and we, we are we are very far apart in age right um <laughs> as a, i wasn't gonna say it but no, that's okay yeah. I, I'm, I'm i don't know if i'm proud of it but it, it is what it is i'm 47 years old and and i'm 30 so there we go so yeah. we've got there's a a whole lifetime between <laughs> us so there, a, a whole generation happened in between our births. It did, so. <laughs> but it, but again, it proves my point that wrestling, you know, doesn't matter your generation or how old. Like it can bring everybody together. Yeah, it crosses barriers. It brings people together. Yeah, and we get to talk about you know past matches and how cool they were. And speaking of past <laughs> matches, let's jump right into. Uh, We've got three of them to talk about tonight. Seeing mm-hmm. as we're talking about title unification, uh, we're going to talk about the first one. Now, this was Super Clash 3. I, I did not write the date down, but I'm pretty sure it was 1986. Uh, either 85 or 86. Yeah, I, yeah. I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was Kerry Von Erich versus most people that are listening that are old school already know uh jerry the king lloyd law <laughs> wow boy these trulies they're they got I'm, a lot of <laughs> hey i'm telling you i'm the truly lady so guess, I'm, I'm supplying a, everybody i'm a basic white bitch mm. i guess i uh <laughs> join the club dogs join the club <laughs> so jerry the king lawler Versus Kerry Von Erich. Now, this was the USWA title versus the AWA title. Mm-hmm. Title for title, unification. Mm-hmm. Funny story about this. In the dressing room, you had asked me about it when we were watching it the first time. Yes. Uh, you had asked me, what's going on with his arm, with, with Kerry Von Erich's arm? Yes. And it there was something just really off about it and then during the match pretty sure that's the same arm that got busted open it was right yeah like very beginning of the match too yeah did did you ever find did you do a deep dive or anything i did not no okay well i i actually did because i didn't remember Mm -hmm. uh carrie von eric was back in the dressing room and accidentally cut himself and on his arm uh-huh. and you know well you saw the guy he's ripped to the gills like to the gods yeah. yeah and when he when he cut himself it's right underneath it just above his armpit like on what i can't i think it was just like a a post that was oh okay and it, it <laughs> gashed him and he's just started bleeding like a stuck pig. Oh my god. So they talked about canceling the match almost, which you know, the the, the thousand people that were there in, in a in a stadium that sat fourteen thousand, there was only like maybe twelve hundred people. But like I will that. tell you though. Those 1,200 people sounded like 14,000. They were like, into it. Man. Watching this match, like you couldn't hear anything. All mm-hmm. you could hear was just women screaming 
and yeah. guys like talking shit to them. Yeah. Like it was so it didn't even matter that there was only 1200 people in there you wouldn't have known <laughs> no you wouldn't have way before the piped in stuff that wwe throws oh, at they you. wish they wish I that know. they could have that sound <laughs> uh, so yeah so what they ended up doing was they ended up bandaging his arm just with a butterfly uh bandage mm-hmm. and sent him out to the ring and that's why it <gasps> took him forever that's- to take his coat off and just he kept picking at it I noticed that that it just looked like he was scratching underneath his armpit or like mm-hmm. it looked like part of the sequins or something was stuck to him. Right. So that's what that was. That's exactly what oh, it was. Oh wow. So that's why is that why they did the arm spot on the turnbuckle like that was immediately? The first spot that they did was the arm spot. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> which it was so funny cuz they were Talking about how he was, you know, bleeding profusely, and obviously toward the end of this match, you could definitely see it. Oh, yeah. But, to- like, kind of in the middle of it, mm-hmm. I couldn't really tell. You you couldn't, and... Uh, but I'm, I think it had, has to do with the, like, the camera angles back then, right? Because the, you didn't, you don't have the, like... Up it was close no, and it was personal no camera. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You don't have the up close, like right up in your face cameraman in the corner, mm-hmm. right? Like you had a hard camera and then you had like one off to the side that they would cut to periodically. Yeah. That was kind of a little bit closer, but like not really. So I think that I had to remind myself, I'm like, okay, this is the eighties, mm-hmm. right? So they don't have the like camera work that we have now and so i'm just gonna have to take their word that he's bleeding because i really can't tell yeah i mean you ended up (laughs) seeing it later but it's uh but i I will say speaking of blood this was out of the three matches that we watched this was the most hard hitting match that we watched possibly one that i have um, seen in a very long time well it wasn't very technical right like you you like the other two matches that we're going to talk about like they definitely have the move sets Mm -hmm. and the finishers and stuff like that like this was pretty much like half an hour of just grappling throwing Mm -hmm. each other against the ropes into the corner like doing clotheslines and maybe that weird looking like claw thing that he did on his head I, i still don't understand how that's a a submission hold but Oh, I'm happy to explain that to you. <laughs> so he basically just like has his hand like a claw. And mm-hmm. in the beginning, he puts it on his stomach yeah, and just kind of wrenches it. And to me, I'm like, okay, maybe that could like be uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But to me, I'm like the pain that jerry is showing on his face i'm like i don't know if well, that would really hurt that much on, lean, lean i'm not gonna here. do that <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, we, there, this is not in a visual medium no one's gonna understand you're just gonna hit me and i don't want that <laughs> i've sat with you during enough pay-per-views to know when you say come here for a second i don't do it <laughs> that's because i'm gonna choke you this time i'm gonna put the iron claw on you which is basically the same thing no the choke is around the neck <laughs> oh, oh okay fair <laughs> Fair, fair. But no, I'll tell you uh, why the match was the way it was. Um, they were working off the cuff. Okay. There were no planned spots. The only planned spot was the end of the match. And then they just kind of spur of the moment had to plan that I'm going to take his arm out. Right. Uh, right there at the beginning. Um, which, uh, again... That's a Memphis style and uh, and a Minnesota style kind of combined. Okay. Minnesota is more of a uh, technical style when you work off the cuff, whereas... Is that more Von Erich? No, no. Actually, that's uh, more... The Von Erichs worked in Texas. Oh, okay. And the Texas kind of bleeds into the Southern style a little bit. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the Memphis style is really just the moves are kind of incidental mm. they're just it's smash mouth it's well that's definitely what this was yeah it, it, it favors the japanese style back then which was mm-hmm. very smash mouth um but yeah that and boy did carrie get busted open yeah it was kind of to the point where he he was 
you know, bleeding, having the crimson mask and everything, but then also no selling moves like pile drivers. That bothered me. And I, I heard in a shoot interview that uh, Lawler was talking about, and he was like, Ed. So he popped right back up from that pile driver. He was like, yeah, I got him for that later. And <laughs> oh, okay. So that was not supposed to be a thing. It was, you know, when you're on, when you're in the moment out there and I'm going to, I'm going to suggest maybe there was some cocaine involved in this. I mean, it was the eighties in wrestling. Yeah. I would imagine that there was a little bit of that going around. We, we know, we know (laughs) Carrie to be a heavy drug user. Uh, Now Lawler claims that he's never had a drug in his life. He's never had a drop of alcohol in his life. That's what he says. I mean, I I don't know if I 100% believe that, but I would think, I, just from the look of him, he doesn't look like he would be a user versus Carrie, who has, you know, cheekbones for days. Right, right. right. The very sunken face, which that's just me assuming, but at the same time, like, you, you kind of look at him and he's... <laughs> You can kind of tell that, and st- I don't know if they did, if steroids had become a thing. Oh, steroids were handed out like water back then. Okay. So, yeah, that's... Yeah. I mean, the moment the guy disrobes, yeah, like, the which, roof comes off of the Oh, yeah. The well, we, we, your roof came off when <laughs> he disrobed. I mean, I, I have Oz. Yeah, I mean, you, know? you had never like, seen Carrie Von Eric before. I, I hadn't. So, I had seen... I had seen part of the episode of the dark side of the ring Mm -hmm. on them. Um, so I kind of knew a little bit about them, but seeing them, any of them in a match, I had, I had never seen any of them. I knew that there was one of them that was like eye candy for everybody. And I, but I didn't know who that was. Turns out, (laughs) turns out it was Carrie. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. Everybody, the modern day warrior. Yeah. Now, the now one we'll, we'll go to the go home on this mm-hmm. one we've been talking about this for a second we have um, but i mean it was it was good it's a classic one it was i it was it went for a lot longer than i i thought that's what i was gonna say like the build-up for this mm-hmm. right so you have like both of them have backstage interviews yeah and then they have an, a time when they announce them and then they both have time in the ring before the match starts to cut a promo Mm -hmm. and then they have time after the match is over to cut a promo and then they have an interview after the match Mm -hmm. to cut a promo like so literally the entire length of it was like 45 minutes yeah and the match itself was maybe like 20 yeah it it (laughs) was which is so it's very different from how it is now i mean you have kind of the similar setup but you you don't have that much build up to Mm -hmm. it and you can all you could also tell who the better uh, showman was because, well, Jerry Lawler, he cut a promo backstage, he yep. cut a promo in the ring, and then he cut a promo afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were all three very different promos. Yes. Uh, Carrie said the same thing three times. Um, it was <laughs> I, I wrote it down because oh, did, yeah. I I noticed that, but I also <laughs> thought it was still really good. So it was a good line. It was. It says. There's one Mona Lisa, one Pyramid of Giza, and there's one heavyweight champion, and you're looking at him. Right. And he said that strong, three times. Strong line. <laughs> but maybe the third time, maybe the bloom's off the rose. <laughs> I mean, hey, the girls still scream the same amount. So they did. They didn't care what he said. They didn't care what he said. It's, so I think he knew that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, Carrie didn't have to be a good talker he I was, mean but he's a looker this the go home on this though I felt was a little and this is just me because I I know you are a fan of mm. the dusty finish or mm-hmm. like the kind of like wonky finish is what I call it yeah but the referee stoppage yeah because of von Eric blood. couldn't see yeah that seemed really weird to me because he was a because Jerry Lawler at that point was wrestling in Minnesota. They were it was a Minnesota town, and uh, and they weren't gonna drop that belt, uh, the AWA title, mm-hmm. to some Yahoo from uh, Texas. So that I, fed okay. got into. <laughs> I understand that, but I feel like that it could have been executed because the match itself mm-hmm. I was thrilled with, yeah, right? But yeah. the 
the fact that you stop a match because you're concerned for an opponent's eyes. Right. Like, that just doesn't seem... It'd be different if it was like, he's bending his arm to the point that it's going to break out of its socket. Right. Or, like, his... like tibia bone is showing right like that i feel like that's like grounds to stop a match the fact that there's too much blood in this man's eyes that he's been bleeding from his head for like 20 Mm -hmm. minutes i don't think that's a good enough reason to stop well you know back then if blood got in your eyes you know it could blind you permanently it's (laughs) i don't know it's and only people from illinois knew that so (laughs) sure okay fine and maybe that they went with that but they definitely booed Oh, they so, did. Oh, they they were yeah. not happy. No. <laughs> and Lawler played it up. He, played he did. It. He did. So, I, I mean, I would say as far as, I mean, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Here's something that we need to talk about. Yeah. Before we move on to our next one. Mm-hmm. We got to rate this thing. We do. Yeah. How are we going to do that? What are we going to call <laughs> this? Because... I for this is a work I call mine Meltzers. You call yours Regals. Yes. Um, what are we what are we doing here? <laughs> you know, I think for right now we can still do the one out of five. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. and then we. I'm a big fan of the uh, of five stars. I agree. Or, you know that's. Uh, and I think we can maybe table the name for right now because okay. I want it I don't want it to be just a combination of Regal and Meltzer right, right? so yeah. I, we can as the show goes on we can maybe think of like a Melger a Melger <laughs> <laughs> no okay so Melger's the one oh to my beat. god <laughs> yes okay so people listening if you think of something better than Melger email us <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want to hear from you guys. Why not, let's let you guys name this. Yeah. Um, give, give us uh, give us your thoughts. If you hear the podcast, if you care to listen again, uh, <laughs> hit us up. Uh, we'll, we'll give out our information uh, yeah. at the end of the show. I mean, I, I gave this a three and a half. That's about, I gave it a three. Yeah. But, so this is gonna be funny because I score higher than you on like everything. Yeah. So you this do. will be really interesting if we can. I think we should have two different but, ones. Right. Yeah. Right. And we're you, not gonna agree. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not. And you know, I, I, I think it's interesting that coming from two different wrestling generations. That we we got fairly close on this. Yeah. I mean, so. I, I gave it a three and a half. Mostly because of the finish, <laughs> right? I liked it up until the end, yeah. and I just, I just get so mad. I get so <laughs> mad with stuff like that. Like, I just, I want a definite finish, right? Right? Like, mm-hmm. unless it's done really well, like honestly, like the next match we're going to talk about, then, right. then I will be okay with it. Yeah. But yeah, so that's why I gave it a three and a half. Okay, so our next match, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna inter- introduce you wanna, it, please? Yeah. Because <laughs> clearly, I can't. <laughs> talk so Boy, this is Trulies, man. i'm telling you this is from vengeance day uh 2001 which is chris jericho versus stone cold steve austin mm-hmm. and honestly this is i feel like it's it's a saga of a match right oh, because yeah. you kind of have to watch the build up to this so you, like this is one where you really needed to watch the whole pay-per-view yeah. to get the full spectrum of and, what's and, happening. And that's what I ended up doing. Because mm-hmm. when we watched it together, I, I we watched it just isolated, like the final one with Jericho mm-hmm. and Austin. But I went back and I watched the Austin and Angle match and then the Rock and Jericho match. What did you think <laughs> of those two matches? Um, I mean... Because they were probably a little bit before you started. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I I knew who all of these people were, mm-hmm. right? But we weren't watching pay per views, right? Like we were, right. we didn't we didn't buy any pay per views. We watched the free stuff on TV, right? right? right. So I I definitely didn't start watching pay per views until I got to college, right? And when the network became a thing and mm-hmm. we could subscribe and do a monthly thing, yeah. So. I kind of had flashbacks while I was watching it of mm-hmm. like, you know, certain things that I can't like distinctly remember the specific time, but I remember these people. Yeah. Right. And I don't know if it's because like all of them have come back, 
you know, since I've been watching. So I don't know if it's partially that. Yeah. They're just younger versions of those Oddly people. enough, all of these people are going to be at WrestleMania. Well, well The Rock. They're, they're all active. Sure. Well. Okay, well, that'll. We'll I save, got a theory. <laughs> we'll save that for the This is a Work episode. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but, I mean, just the, the build up to this match was just so fun right so it was. you had especially i mean the austin angle match was good but the rock jericho match like just the back and forth between it and then the mcmahon interference yeah and i that one i didn't mind because mcmahon back then was a character oh right yeah. like mr mcmahon right yeah. like you i just remember him being loathed at the top, oh, yeah. like oh, yeah. every, I mean that when he came on the screen, mm-hmm. like you just, you know, did not like this man. Yeah. So when he comes down, you just feel the like hatred just coming <laughs> onto the ramp, right? Yeah. And so when Jericho <laughs> wins, because I mean, again, I didn't realize that Jericho was a McMahon guy <laughs> until watching this match. Right. Um, when McMahon kind of interferes and then Jericho wins and then he immediately has to go into this match with Austin and you just see the look on Jericho's face when the glass shatters and you hear like it's he just is like right now I have to do this right now like you feel the emotion (laughs) on his like coming through him Mm -hmm. and the match itself to me wasn't I'm not going to say it wasn't spectacular, but like there really wasn't much to it. But I think there it was wasn't, because it was the flamboyance yeah. of it because the rock. Well, there's a reason that he calls himself the most electrifying. He he's flamboyant. He is over the top mm-hmm. with his work, and Jericho is one of. And this is why I, a lot of people call Jericho the goat, arguably. Uh, because Jericho, unlike so many wrestlers nowadays, can go to the level of his opponent. He can mm-hmm. drop down if he needs to and still get his match across, or he can go up higher if he needs to. You can see that in AEW now. You can. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, especially with his match with Eddie right. recently, Eddie Kingston. Yes. like Great example. Yeah, so he, you know... He definitely matched the manic energy of Eddie really, really well, and mm-hmm. I don't really see him as that style. So, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So, no, the buildup to this match was utterly fantastic because I remember watching the previous Raws, and at that point, they were doing um, a shot, uh, uh, Sunday Night Heat, I believe it was called, mm-hmm. and it was what we call now the kickoff show and that whole thing was just was just awesome i mean the the raws that were that led up to it as you saw mcmahon telling the story Mm -hmm. of what he was going to do about how he jericho was his boy and he was going to be the next guy Mm-hmm. And The Rock and Stone Cold, that's passe. We're into the new era now. Mm-hmm. And we're into the ruthless aggression era. And WCW is gone. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that was the whole point of all of this. Because as I, at first there wasn't a WCW guy going to take his title Mm -hmm. until he got on board with Jericho and now it's okay and now he's going to be the guy that we're going to put all our money into Mm -hmm. and it it was so good because when we were when I was watching over your house I was just picturing the uh the the raws that led up to it and just the the story that led up to it and how every single raw was a cliffhanger with either Austin big yeah you know, big close up on Austin yelling at, at at Vince or Jericho in shock because The Rock came out or Angle mm. standing there, you know, with his milk truck. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it was just so much put into it. And those, 
the, those guys right there, they were holding the business together. That right, and they were the top superstars. Arguably, we're probably never gonna have that range of superstars mm -hmm. all at one time in the same federation ever again. Yeah, because you you have these guys who none of them really have a huge move set. Right? Like they well, have. They do, but they're. Yeah. <sighs> All right. We're going to have to get into it. Oh, a okay. Bit. Cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's what this show is about. Well, you know, when you work for, when you work for Vince, mm -hmm. Vince wants you to be prime time. He wants, uh, he wants you to be Hulk Hogan. Now, Hogan, when he was playing for the States. Mm-hmm. You saw him do five moves, and that's why a lot of people hate Hogan. Not anymore. They hate him for different reasons now. <laughs> There's a We're not going to get into that. Yeah. <laughs> but if you ever, I would encourage all of you, not that I'm a Hogan fan, because I am definitely not, never have been. Even when I was a kid, I was never a Hulkamaniac. <laughs> but if you watch some of the stuff that he does in Japan, I would encourage all of you to YouTube Hulk Hogan in Japan and watch his wrestling. He's actually got a decent move set. Okay. And he's doing stuff that you wouldn't really see him do. Like Hogan was able to throw inseguris and Whoa. yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it's when you when you see him do it you're like what what just what, happened yeah. <laughs> did that just am i that's a big uh, man to throw an insecurity and he he nails people with it mm. and wow and technically strong right and it, so yeah you you should google that but neither here nor there mm-hmm I, I had a point, and I forgot what it we were was. We are talking about the, the limited <laughs> move set. Like, you don't have right. a lot of moves, but and it's fun. Then, it's entertaining to watch. But see, people like that formula. Right. Hogan had a a formula for his match. Ric Flair yep. had a formula for his match. Austin also had a formula for his match. So did The Rock. Yeah. Jericho, on the other hand... He didn't really have a formula, and but it was a new era. But I think that's why this match just ended in chaos, mm -hmm. right? Because you have the ref getting knocked out, then you have inf you know interference, you know going on with McMahon, and then you have Booker T coming out, which I didn't understand, but obviously that is storyline that was that of was, the time period. And yeah, because they had just bought WCW at the time. <laughs> well, yeah, because it was, um, I think it was Jay, uh, it was Lawler, because he was on commentary at this point with JR. Yes. And Booker T comes out and he hits uh, Stone Cold in mm -hmm. the back of the head with the bell as he's putting the walls of Jericho on him. And... <laughs> Lawler goes, he doesn't even work here, JR. <laughs> and, the, the and I was like, wait, he doesn't work here? And then I remembered the whole storyline with WCW and mm -hmm. all that shit. Yeah. And saying that, that was a beautiful, because that led to the Stone Cold Booker feud that ended in a grocery store. Oh, which, yeah. Oh, okay, my yeah. God, was the just the best <laughs> damn thing ever. <laughs> yeah, I do, I don't remember. I wasn't watching at the time, mm -hmm. but I rem, I know of that. Right. Of that. Yeah. Reference. Yeah. I mean, I I I enjoyed this. I did too. immensely, and I mean Jericho ends up winning and is the undisputed title holder. And I have to say, it took them like maybe a week to get that new belt together mm -hmm. but when they did and they showed off that is my favorite world heavyweight title ever and it feels like it was only there maybe four or five months mm -hmm. and then john cena wins and then they go with the spinner with the spinner and, and, yeah, and the, yes. all that <laughs> shit and yeah i mean i i gave this a four like this was pretty high for me but i think it's because i was 
like including the the build up to this because if mm-hmm. you're if you're watching it by itself, I would say pretty standard three for me. Really? Okay. Yes. Okay. But if you include the build up in the mm-hmm. two matches prior, that just it's this building of the story. I think that's what makes it a four for me. See now. Uh, this is okay we're gonna have to talk about this i gave this match a five did you yes i did okay. yeah i did i'm saying i knew you were gonna give me that look it's, i'm shocked uh, i thought you were gonna give it lower no no i actually did i gave this match a five okay I, now there arguably there may be some nostalgia that's left in Possibly. in my brain that's kicking around that made me give it a five. It also <laughs> might be the fact that I haven't seen anything good on WWE in a really long and time. You and you were just jonesing for it. You know, you, know? you got to get your fix. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so to see that, I was like, oh, baby. Yeah, no, yeah it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the fruition of actually good storytelling. Sure. And, and just uh, inside of one pay per view. Like, so there's y- not months and months of buildup for this i mean i'm sure there was at the time but if i'm watching it just isolated as a Mm pay-per-view like i mean that was a full story beginning middle and end for me oh yeah yeah and the match was a story in itself Mm -hmm. because jericho's already tired and Mm -hmm. he still manages to pull it out with help from uh, from McMahon and Booker T, mm-hmm. but still, uh, I think that's why I gave it a four. Like yeah. instinctually, I was like, "This is not a true finish," right? You know, right. so I think that's why. And, and I'll, I will concede to some nostalgia on that. And sure. you know what? I will back down my. You uh, don't have to back down. No, you no, give it what you want to give it. I because I, 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 I want to be fair, and so I'm going to back it down. Half a whatever we're gonna call it. So you're uh, giving it a four and a half. I'll go four and a half. Okay, oh, I can I can deal with yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If we were going into quarters, I might even go. You know. Okay, four. that's going into Gina territory, <laughs> and we're not gonna have that. Not even on this show. Okay, we're doing halves, and that's what I we're doing. I couldn't remember who it was that, that it was, hated it. it. It was me. Yeah, it was me because she because Gina tries to pull the three point two five on me, and I'm yeah. like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're doing halves and holes, and that we're gonna be happy about it. Because <laughs> you know, for the longest time, I was doing the quarters. I know. And. And between uh, probably you and my friend up in Lincolnton, uh, Jason Finger, a.k.a. J.D. Styles, who I just recently found out is moving to Virginia. I'll <gasps> talk to you about that later. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, actually, I was supposed to keep that a secret. Whoops. <laughs> David, cut that out. <laughs> Nah, I'll leave it in. Okay. He's he's not gonna listen to me. He <laughs> he doesn't listen to your finger. Shows. Finger doesn't care. That's uh, <laughs> so. Our next one and our final match uh, for this podcast. Uh, this is going to oh my god. Mhm. I just it just went off my screen. <laughs> it's Cena versus it, Orton. I well, I knew it was Cena versus Orton, but I was. <laughs> I don't have. I don't remember what pay per view it was. It was TLC 2017. Dang, oh boy, am I glad you're here. <laughs> that's why. That's why you chose me. Yeah, that's and, why you chose. That's me. right. And here it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. John <laughs> Cena versus Randy Orton. Uh, 2017 mm-hmm. TLC. And this was. I had started watching again mm-hmm. during this time because I I remember we were watching it together. And I saw the chairs hanging from the ceiling. I was like, oh, I remember this. If I remember correctly, <laughs> this is just maybe a year before we started our podcast. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, very, so fairly recent. Mm-hmm. 2017 is still yeah, that's, a time ago, but yeah. it was fairly recent. I mean, these two, these two guys, I feel like Orton to me is up there in top five wrestlers for me. Oh yeah. Because I mean, he he wasn't in my top five when I first started on this whole podcast journey with you. Mm -hmm. I think I revealed my top five to you the very first time I came on the show. Right. But he has 
definitely gotten into the top five for me. And I know he, he can be problematic, but <laughs> at the same time, when you're looking at just his work. Let's, okay. When you say problematic, <laughs> let's be specific <laughs> because I know what you're talking about. <laughs> But uh, he can be kind of a dick, right? <laughs> in real life, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I think that when you look at his work over the course of his entire career, yes, I mean he's been consistent, and mm-hmm. this match to me is probably one of my favorite Orton matches that I've ever seen. I gotta agree because I really do. I mean, he's just crazy in mm-hmm. this match. Like there was one in particular where he. He get very early on, he gets thrown out and Cena has already piled a bunch of chairs like in front of the announce tables Mm -hmm. and he just gets thrown out and he lands on top of the chairs, picks up a chair and gets back into the ring and faces Cena. And it literally is like 10 seconds, Yeah, right? Like it's, it's just a regular person who would get thrown out of a ring on top of a thing of metal chairs right. would have to sit there for at least a couple of seconds. Yeah. Right? Like, so seeing him just get thrown out, picking it up, doing it all in one fluid motion, like, mm-hmm. it's just, it's like ballet, right? It you is. You just sit there and you watch it and he's just back in the ring. Yeah. And this is my biggest problem with... I, I say it's John Cena, mm-hmm. but it's really with everybody uh, in this time frame of wrestling and now. Mm-hmm. I need you to sell more. This was back in a time where, and it's still going on today, where, where you said, well, if I sell, it makes me look weak. Mm-hmm. And I can't. I wish that every wrestler would just come to Kayfabe Outpost 1 and just let me tell you. (laughs) It doesn't make you look weak. You get sympathy Mm. when you're hurt. Mm -hmm. So if you, and if you're a heel, well, you want to look and you get hurt. You want that weakness Mm -hmm. because you're about to do something chicken shit to (laughs) piss people off. Like uh, no selling a pile driver. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's, I I, I get what you're saying, Mm -hmm. but I think like just the, the back and forth that they both had Mm -hmm. with this match. Like, I mean, there were so many like times when you would get up on the, on the ladder and you know how I, I am a sucker for a TLC match. Absolutely. I just love it. Like when you get up on the on the ladder and you're reaching and you're like almost there mm-hmm. and then someone comes and just like throws you through a table. Like yeah. there was one spot, both of them went through a table from the ladder yeah. during this match. Mm-hmm. And one of them got up and one of them didn't. <laughs> and the one that got up was Orton. Yeah. Right? Like he legit goes through a table on the outside of the ring. Mm-hmm. John Cena goes up the ladder, is about to unhook both of the belts, and Orton just pops up out of nowhere. Flies and into the ring. Pushes the ladder off, and then Cena falls. Right. And, and then does an RKO. Like, and this is the he's biggest. not human. And <laughs> this is my problem with ladder matches. I love a good ladder match. Right. Um, Everybody, look, as I, since we're talking about this is a rewind, mm-hmm. uh, I want everybody to go back and look at the first WWF ladder match, which was Razor Ramon, R.I.P. Scott Hall, and Shawn mm-hmm. Michaels. In my mind, that is still the most innovative ladder match that I have ever seen. I still haven't seen that one. You, I <laughs> I need you to watch that one. Maybe that can be our next episode. If, if we you, just talk about ladder matches. Maybe we should. Yeah. Maybe we should. <laughs> I think if you and I are going to have any future together, you have to watch them. <laughs> I will. I will watch it. I love a, ma- a ladder match. <laughs> but regardless of all that, it, still ladder match is ladder match and I say this about ladder matches, and I say this about battle royals. It's hard to fuck it up. Yeah, that's true. Uh, 
So in this particular case, I have to give this one, and this it's tricky because I, I had a real problem with Cena and his no-selling back then, but I also had a problem with Orton no-selling too. Mm. And because of that, I had to give this one, uh, I had to drop this one down from what I wanted to give it. So I gave it a three and a half. Mm. You did a five, didn't you? Yeah. yeah I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I can't even, I, I can't I see did. it. I knew you I did. did. I gave it a five because, okay, there was a particular spot. How backwards are we? Very backwards. <laughs> but there was this particular spot where it was, Cena was on the top of the ladder. He has a hold of the belts. And then Randy comes and he pushes him, pushes the ladder out from under him. And Cena's just dangling. Yeah. Right? And then he just oh, has yeah. a chair in his hand and he's like thinking about it. And then he's like, okay, I'm going to hit him. And he just hits him and then he drops. Right. And then it's, there's others. There were so many like close like, call ladder spots that were just so good. That's the thing about the ending. I actually did like the ending. Yeah. And if Cena would have sold it a little bit more but the handcuffs of it all <laughs> do you did you forget about the handcuffs i did forget about the handcuffs no, so the, yeah. okay so i the, actually listeners, have it written down dude, here but the handcuffs so basically what happened was orton just out of underneath the corner of the ring gets out a thing of handcuffs yeah and handcuffs cena to the ring mm-hmm. like to the rope right and then he's like, ho, ho, I got him. So I'm going to take my time and I'm going to go up the ramp and I'm going to get the biggest ladder I can find. Mm-hmm. And because Cena's stuck and he's going to just have to watch me do it. Right. Right. Cena somehow undoes the turnbuckle and climbs up the ladder with the rope attached to him. Yeah. How is that not five stars? <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. I, I understand. I do. But how much shit as it? <laughs> Is John Cena really Superman? Is he really Peacemaker? No, he no, no, he didn't because there was a tool. There was a turnbuckle tool that he somehow came out with he and did. he undid it with that. It wasn't that he pulled it from the turnbuckle. He undid it yeah, with it's, the tool. Well, it's a it's a wrench. It just, okay, he it's, undid yeah. it with the wrench, but he wasn't <laughs> Superman, right? right? He didn't pull it from the thing. But I mean, after all that he went through, and. <sighs> And here I go, sound like Grandpa Two Dogs again. But back in the day, okay. uh-huh. <laughs> if you got hit with a chair, then that was it. I mean, <laughs> how many times did he get hit with a chair? A lot. In this <laughs> a lot, but... <sighs> It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so that that either tells me that tells me one of two things. Either back in the day they were swinging those chairs a lot harder. Mhm. And or maybe today Maybe they're just not building chairs like they used to. <laughs> that, and also back in the day, they weren't protecting themselves from these chair shots. That's true. I have seen a many of old school matches where hands were not put up in front of their faces, mm-hmm. and they were taking full face shots with the chair. Yeah. I, so that's probably why a chair shot could be a match ender, yeah. right? And now we know better, mm-hmm. and we're safe about it. Yeah. Can can confirm. <laughs> can confirm. If you – that was uh, – I, st- I actually got into – Wrestling, I wanna. Well, I started training back in. I was, uh, oh boy, I was 23 mm-hmm. when I started training. Uh, we're out on the road for maybe a year and a half, and then a couple years later, we started our own federation. But mm-hmm. back during that time, if you put your hand up for a chair shot instead of just dropping your head like a man 
you were a wuss. <laughs> what kind of you, let's say, what kind of soft serve ice cream are you, y- man? You were gonna take your concussion like a man, right? <laughs> and guys, I'm. I'm I, you may not be able to tell by my smooth radio voice, but I've had <laughs> about seven concussions. <laughs> and <laughs> All from chairs. Crazy. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I know. But I, I, I gave it a five because, I mean, he climbs up with the turnbuckle attached to his handcuff and tries to hit him with it. But Randy jumps down, pulls the rope that he's connected to, to the point where he flies through a table that's set up in the corner. And that's how Randy wins. First of all, I can't, I, I, I'm still amazed. We did not talk about this previous to the podcast. No, we just showed up and started talking. Uh, <laughs> I, I love the fact that generally I go low and you go high. Yeah. And... The, and then the match beforehand, I went high, you went low, <laughs> and but but you know what? It's it actually is a testament to the generation gap. Okay. Because of and it's specifically just because of what you said. It's specifically because of the salesmanship mm. and the story of the match with Cena coming up with the rope is what yeah. put it over for you. It did. Yeah, like what I I was going to do it kind of a run of the mill type of thing or at least a four for me yeah. which is kind of run of the mill. If you've listened to my show, you know I score pretty high. Uh-huh. But I mean, once he like that turnbuckle just comes with him and he's going up the ladder with half of the ring attached to him like right. th- that was killer for me I mean, and, and i i get it too and i i love this <laughs> I, I just absolutely am in love with what we've done here yes it's because it, it shows the generation gap and it shows and, and neither one of us are wrong no not at all and uh I, well i mean except for you not watching the uh watching uh, Razor and Shawn Michaels. Yeah, but we're going to remedy that because we're going to have more episodes. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick with my three and a half. I guess you're sticking with your five. Hey, we can uh, agree to disagree, man. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So, I, you know, the thing about it, I've been thinking about this for a couple of weeks now. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't actually figured out how to end this thing. <laughs> I think we have some ideas on, you know, where we want this show to go. And right. we, we have, we're not going to, you know, fully divulge everything that we want to do just yet. Sure. But I think this show can be our, either we can go for nostalgia, right? Mm-hmm. We can heart back on what we real what really got us to the dance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then we can also kind of look and see, where the product is right now. Those wrestling terms. I know That's, you've taught me well. Oh, we so can look proud. at where wrestling is right now mm-hmm. and kind of see it through kind of a different lens. Yeah. Right. Because what the product is right now is very different from where it was oh, before. Hundred percent. And I think this can kind of be our escape. Mm-hmm. And you know, talk about what it is that really brought us to the thing that we love the most. Right. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do for the next show. Uh, Mm -hmm. We've talked about a couple of things. Yeah. I thought about something in the middle of this podcast uh, because, you know, we've got WrestleMania this weekend. Yes. And then we just got through our last pay-per-view before that was Revolution, Mm -hmm. which is an AEW uh, pay-per-view. And, Arguably a more violent, more blood-soaked uh, pay-per-view. Which is why I love it. Right. And <laughs> I think it's uh, interesting uh, also because of the what I was talking about earlier about the no-selling. Yeah. And how exactly did we get to that point? And I think you can say that with three letters, and those letters are ECW. Oh. 
Okay. So I think that might be something to put in the crock pot yeah, and let that definitely. simmer. And maybe we'll come up, we'll talk about some ECW stuff for next time and maybe how it translates mm-hmm. to AEW and and current WWE. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe we can do something like that. Yeah, and I mean, we can reach it out to our listeners, and if they, if there's certain things that you guys want to hear, right. you know, and hear us talk about, it, it, that's not the current product, right? If you want to hear specific things that you want us to talk about, like you know, just hit us up. Absolutely, and you know, you can uh, if you want to hit us up, mm-hmm. you can hit me up at. Uh, this is a work podcast. I probably should change that since we got a new podcast now. That's but true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you can also hit me up on Twitter. I believe I've got a. I don't know what my Twitter is. Immortal Two Dogs. There you go. Thank you. Social media manager over here. <laughs> there it is. You can hit me up at Immortal Two Dogs. And uh, what about yours? Yeah. So if you want to follow me, you can follow me at Slay All Ray. Um, on Instagram. Um, and if you want to follow This is a Takeover, the other show that I host with uh, Gina Belmont, you can follow us at this underscore pod on Twitter or This is a Takeover on Instagram. And if you want to follow um, us at Long Walk Productions, you can follow us at Long Walk on Facebook and Long Walk Podcast on Instagram. Now, before we sign off, uh, as I've said at the time we're recording this, it's the Ides of WrestleMania. We've got an NXT pay-per-view tomorrow afternoon? Yeah, we have. um, They're not calling them takeovers anymore, but we are still going to be called This is a Takeover. (laughs) I'll be damned if they're going to make me change my name. Word. I'm not going to change it. So it is called Stand and Deliver, which is a takeover that they've done for WrestleMania weekend in the past. Right. Um, Last year, we got two nights. This year, we have an afternoon. So we are going. (laughs) That's the same treatment that Saudi Arabia. Arabia gets. Tell me about it, man. <laughs> Tell me about it. So, uh, Stand and Deliver, the next NXT takeover is going to be um, Saturday, April the 2nd at 1 p.m. Um, we will definitely have an episode in your feed about yeah. that, and you will hear our thoughts about it, because I'm sure we're going to have thoughts. Right on, right on. And, um, you know, I think we should... Uh, I'm not really sure when this is going out. Probably sometime this weekend, if I had to guess. Um, I'm not sure about we. Like I said, this whole thing has just been kind of off the off the cuff. We kind of called mm-hmm. this whole thing in the ring. We did. And I, I'm not sure when it's going up, and I'm not even sure the frequency of how long we're going to do this. <laughs> We've discussed doing it once a month. We've discussed mm-hmm. doing it every other month. Um, I think whenever we get an idea. Right. You know, I think we can just, you know, float it through and see what we come up with. This right can be on. kind of our our discussion podcast where we don't have to really have a schedule and have a format. We can just kind of talk about what we want to talk about. Right on, right on. Well, you got anything else? I don't. I'm good. All right. All right. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, for Long Walk Podcast and Shelby Death Ray Patterson, this is David Two Dogs Hayes saying, guys, you know, It's fun to look at the past. And as far as the future goes, we're going to call it in the ring.